Elon Musk is visionary on a mission. Well, the man has got several tasks, but one quite outstanding now is on the mission to colonize Mars for all humanity before 2050. This might very well be the reason why he built his space organization known as SpaceX, which is not only one of the top places in technologies concerning space travel designs and planning, but they are definitely going to be the first group to land humans on Mars, for a short holiday at least. And Elon Musk doesn't only plan to send people to Mars. No offense to NASA, who only did that with the moon, he intends to establish a home there, where humans will live and multiply on the moon just like on Earth. One must be wondering how Musk is going to accomplish this. That is a valid question. Welcome to Tech Space. Watch this video to the end, because we will review how Elon Musk plans to send humans to Mars by 2050. You may want to know humans will survive on Mars, so we'll open up all secrets. The project is the type that will take a great deal of time and effort, but most of the work is already in progress in SpaceX, thanks to the idea of the Starship. Musk had written that the goal of his plans for Mars is to launch a Starship vehicle at least three times a day on average, with each Starship having a capacity of 100 tons of payload to orbit. Each car would lift about 100,000 tons annually at that flight rate. And yes, these numbers might sound a little exaggerating, but Musk is only trying to abide by the laws of space and reality. Musk's plans for Mars are based on a long-term goal. It's not just landing on Mars, but making Mars ready for humans to inherit. So, very soon, we'll actually get there, given the necessary time and resources and the spaceships required to bring enough people to Mars to make a colony will readily be available in a decent amount of time. Musk is always trying to do things now instead of waiting for the so-called appropriate time. And it seems his plans for Mars just added a higher degree to that trait. So what's the essence of waiting when he dreams to shape the human race toward the future? The critical factor in Musk's plan is the Starship designed with a Raptor that uses liquid oxygen and methane. The fuel is a simple chemical conversion. It will be possible to convert carbon dioxide on arms into energy using fuel plants integrated into the Starship or sent to Mars beforehand. Elon Musk hopes to take advantage of the upcoming orbital synchronization, which will closely occur in 2022 and 2024 when the Earth and Mars will be in the closest alignment. This phenomenon occurs every 26 months. Since the two planets follow an egg-shaped orbit, not every alignment is equal. But during an orbital synchronization, the distance between the two is reduced to around 50 to 55 million kilometers, making it the ideal time for a launch. Musk's plan is definitely a long shot, as each orbital synchronization would likely be focused on building out the base, providing support, fuel production, and gradually increasing habitats, support structures, and large farm modules for the intended Martian community. He has made several controversial statements that have made people think of him as being out of his mind. The best way to take Mars over and make its thin atmosphere and frigid climate more like piles of the Earth is locked in a few scientific suggestions termed terraforming. Musk's big plans for terraforming Mars lie in nuclear weapons. He wants to detonate atomic devices on Mars Pole, vaporizing its ice caps, releasing a colossal amount of water vapor and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is liable to cause a runaway greenhouse effect. The temperature will rise due to the greenhouse gases released by the explosion, which will make the Martian rocks heat up and release more carbon dioxide, heating the planet and releasing more carbon dioxide. This will be effective in giving Mars a thicker atmosphere, Earth-like temperatures, and actual liquid water. With the introduction of green plants, they will be an increase in oxygen levels. There have been many other suggestions on what to do to Mars. One of them is large orbital mirrors that are hundreds of miles long and flying them to Mars. They're supposed to be placed a few hundred thousand miles away from the planet, 
where they will reflect solar radiations onto the Mars surface, raising its temperature by a few degrees, but it will result in global warming. Another suggestion is to introduce pollution to the atmosphere by building a solar-powered greenhouse facility on Mars. This endeavor will take almost the same effort as moving mirrors that weigh thousands of tons. It is a suitable way of providing the gases that will heat up and thicken the atmosphere and convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, making Mars human-friendly and poisonous gases. Musk has stated that after the poles have been blasted to melt the ice caps and induce warming, the initial human outpost on Mars will live in glass dorms, and one million people will be living and working there by 2050. SpaceX reports that the first settlers of Mars will begin immediate work on constructing a self-sustaining city, with the focus being on establishing life support systems enabling surface power, developing environments, and building greenhouses. The glass dorms are still very important, as they will be required to give humans safe space to set up the colonies. SpaceX proposes to ship 100 people at a time to Mars. However, early concepts from the company show a much smaller population making the initial trip, with the principal goal of troubleshooting the planet. But Musk has stated that before SpaceX can transport many people to Mars, several cargo missions would be carried out first. These missions will definitely include transporting equipment, habitat, and supplies. This equipment contains machines to provide fertilizers, methane, and oxygen from Mars' atmosphere, and most essential materials to build the glass dorms, because without which, there'd likely be nowhere to settle just yet. Most of these concepts are yet to be fully designed by the company, but they are crucial plans and ideas that our existence on Mars depends on. And it's right to say that they are lofty ideas. Still, as we all know, one must first go through the planning stage before implementing everything to start running and trust for SpaceX to come up with mind-blowing ideas. Musk has stated many times that his dream is theoretically possible and that he has everything under control as he is going all out to make sure no stone is left unturned. Every settlement, or in this case, colony, operates under specific laws and order. So the question is, what could be the laws that will govern the Red Planet? Well, Musk has stated that he and his company will not abide by any international laws beyond Earth, but will instead adopt governing principles established on good faith. This means Mars will be a free planet, or maybe Mars will be like the case of Star Wars, divided by rebels in the Empire. Let's hope that would not be the case. Despite a high likelihood of dying even before arriving, and daily conditions hostile to human life, Elon Musk said in an interview that he'd probably move to Mars. The SpaceX and chief executive said there's a 70% chance he'll get to Mars within his lifetime with plans to permanently resettle on the Red Planet. Musk said his desire to colonize Mars is driven by the same passion that fuels people to climb mountains for the challenge. During the interview, Musk compared the proposition to colonize Mars to explore Ernest Shackleton's expeditions to Antarctica. He said the price of a ticket to Mars would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, with no guarantee of return or even survival during the trip or upon landing. Well, that's just not so reassuring. But despite the daunting journey, Musk sees a worthwhile trade-off. Just like during the mountain climbing game, it's somewhat recognized as a game of survival for the fittest, where people may die on Mount Everest most of the time, but yet liking doing it for the challenge. Earlier this year, SpaceX pledged to advance its space exploration efforts by revealing the identity of its first paying tourist, who would take a trip around the moon. In 2023, Japanese billionaire Yusaku Mizawa and six to eight artists are tentatively scheduled to fly to the moon on a week-long trip. Their vehicle, the nearly 400-foot-tall Starship, is still in development and is slated to complete its first flights to orbit in two to three years. But SpaceX and Musk's interplanetary plans have seen setbacks. 
The company recently announced a delay in its initial mission to fly NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. SpaceX also delayed its plans to fly tourists around the moon. Musk has also drawn scrutiny for his behavior. NASA had ordered a safety review of SpaceX after Musk participated in a popular podcast in which he smoked marijuana and drank whiskey on an episode streamed online. Musk's actions rankled some of NASA's top officials, and in a months-long assessment, the agency is examining SpaceX's culture. NASA will also conduct a safety review of Boeing, another company under contract with NASA to transport astronauts to the International Space Station. If the Starship is set to transport the first batch of humans into Mars today, would you want to join and land on the Red Planet? Please, do well to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and while you're still around, why don't you click on one of those flashing videos on the screen for more content?